Hello right. and welcome. It's Tuesday, Thanks. September 24th, and we have with us today Arenda Griffin, the uh, School of Molecular Sciences and Academic Advising, and Brittany, oh boy, I hope I say this right, Duntelli? Donzella. Donzella, oh boy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a solid start. Brittany Donzella, thank you for, uh, from uh, School of Life Sciences Academic Advising. Thank you both for coming to speak to us. We're very excited. Um, they have a presentation for us on the um, online biochemistry degree program and the online biological sciences degree program. And um, we'll do a Q&A afterwards. So if you guys have questions as we're going through this, please feel free to drop them in the chat. Otherwise, we're going to stay muted while uh, Brittany and Arenda go through their presentation, um, and I'll pass it over to you now. Okay, thanks so much for inviting us. Um, we're happy to do it, and we kind of put together common questions or things that we cover during advising appointments. Um, at the end of the presentation, we added the questions that you asked, um, and we can answer additional questions um, as well. So, what we wanted to cover is the curriculum in both of the majors, kind of an overview of that. Um, the labs and how they work between the majors. Some students have already come for some of the labs, some haven't yet. Um, we wanted to talk about internships and research opportunities within the majors, um, and then different career opportunities after graduation. Um, Ellie mentioned that you guys wanted to compare and contrast. So that's what we're going to do, compare and contrast all these different areas between the two majors, and we'll go back and forth. So a kind of an outline of the curriculum for our major, um, I've done it by year, and this is assuming first time freshmen starting out on the program in the very beginning. Obviously, we have a lot of transfer students from um, all over the country, and. I just had a student from Japan earlier, so another deaf Japan student, so all over the world sometimes. But this is just taken into account um, if students were starting out as a freshman. So um, we require English composition. Um, we require two semesters of calculus in our major. It's calculus for engineer, math 265 and 266. Um, general chemistry, there's two semesters of that. Um, in the first year, there's some social sciences and humanities classes as well. Students tend to choose psychology, sociology, history, anthropology. Um, in the second year, students do physics. There are two um, physics courses as well, general physics one, general physics two, organic chemistry one and two. Um, students finish up any of the other social sciences and humanities, and then there's an opportunity for electives. Um, there's one lower division elective in our major. Um, oftentimes we get kind of pre-health students, so we recommend anatomy and physiology sometimes for that one elective. Um, and then the labs are always occurring in the summer. Um, when they occur is usually released when the summer schedule comes out, um, probably early February. We usually know the date sometime around January. Um, and those are in person. We'll talk more about that in just a little bit. Um, in the third year, students do general biology one and two, um, and then we require physical chemistry, and it has um, a biological focus. So it's physical chemistry, but more examples that relate to DNA, protein structures, um, and then students do biophysical chemistry as well. It's kind of like the continuation of biochemistry. We have an opportunity for several upper division electives in our major. Um, you could do a minor with those upper division electives, or you could just do classes that are 300 level or above that you are interested in. Um, you could use that to do additional recommended requirements for any graduate degree programs you want to apply to as well. Um, Science and Society is a College of Liberal Arts and Sciences requirement. It's required for all the BS degrees in the college. Um, students in our major choose to pin uh, bioethics, um, tend to choose bioethics, and, uh, medical anthropology is popular, basic energy science. So depending on your career outcomes and goals, it kind of direct and steer 
sports science and society classes would be most beneficial. Um, in the fourth year is when the students finally get to take biochemistry, <laughs> biochemistry one, biochemistry two. Um, we have two advanced biology electives in our major. Um, some of the choices for the online group is anatomy and physiology, if you hadn't already taken that as an elective, um, cell biology, genetics, animal physiology, um, and microbiology. Um, there is one upper division chemistry or biochemistry elective, and the options for that are medicinal chemistry, analytical chemistry, um, and just recently introduced in organic chemistry. And then finally, students do a capstone course of biochemistry lab, and they complete that at the end of the program. It's kind of applying everything you've learned the entire time. That's an also, also an in-person experience uh, here in TV. Okay, cool. So I laid it out a little differently for biological sciences because there's not really going to be a right or wrong way to take our, some of our courses. So some of them are sequential. Um, the core electives or the core courses you can see in the middle are definitely sequential, so need one before the other. But really the bulk of the major, the major requirements, which is the bottom middle, it's seven classes. It's, it's five classes that we call additional major requirements, which are upper division bio, microbiology fits there as well, two labs, and then two electives. So really any bio classes that we have available and the DARS is not exhaustive. So I just typically encourage students to look at what courses we have available that semester that has the bio prefix with the upper division attached to it. So that's our core bulk of our major. Some of them are gonna require the general chemistry is one and two. So we kind of bounce back and forth between bio one, bio two, and then our general chemistry one, general chemistry two. Some of our bio courses need both of them. Some of them don't need either. Some of our upper division bio courses maybe don't even need the bio one and two. And I apologize, there's a typo. So core course, it should say bio 181 and then bio 182. So the bulk of the bio major can kind of mix and match based on what students want to take. And then we usually pair those with some of the ASU requirements. So maybe you're taking bio one with a humanities, or maybe if you're comfortable with math, you're taking bio and math together. So it really depends, the major is pretty flexible. It's a little bit different. And then the related area, general chemistry one and two are required. And then organic chemistry is funny. So mm -hmm. elementary organic chemistry is one semester of organic chemistry. And that is good for the major. That'll finish your organic chemistry requirements for the major. Uh, the other sequence would be 233, and then 237 is the corresponding lab. And then 234 is the lecture, 238 is the lab. So pre-med, pre-health typically require two sequence, two set sequence. So if you're thinking of pre-med, pre-health route, you want the two semester sequence, which is the same sequence that's in biochemistry. If you're thinking pre-health, pre-med, it's not an option for you or you don't want that, you, you just need one semester of organic chemistry to finish the biological science major. 231 is elementary organic chemistry and then 235 is his lab, and that's totally fine. Elementary organic chemistry does allow you to still take biochemistry, so some students that still need biochemistry, um, or 233 and 234 are needed for biochemistry. So some students, and this is a question I get a lot, can I just take 233 and then 237, it's his lab? Yes, that technically satisfies our one semester of organic chemistry, but you cannot take then biochemistry. So if you're like, okay, I don't need biochemistry, just wanted organic chemistry one, 233, 237, that's totally fine. Sometimes the DARS doesn't read that it's fine, just reach out to us and we can help you with that. Um, physics, Physics 101 is absolutely perfect for the major, that's Introduction to Physics, the four credit lecture and lab. Pre-med, pre-health is typically wanting the two-set sequence. So then you would take the 111, 113 is the lab. That'll finish the major. Um, or pre-health takes the second set. So there's a few options for the physics. We need a calculus class. Um, 251 is listed in the major. That's calculus for life sciences. That does require pre-calculus. So it'll take college algebra, pre-calculus, then 251. Uh, math 210 is brief calculus, does not require pre-calculus. So 210 
will satisfy the calculus requirement. Or some students that are coming from biochemistry or engineering, they've taken 270, which is the calculus with analytic geometry, and that's totally fine as well. So any of those calculus requirements. And then we've listed some of the statistics requirements. 231 is stats for life sciences. We would recommend that students take that one, right, because it's specific for the School of Life Sciences. Um, but general statistics is fine, uh, the 226. And then students maybe moving over from psychology might have like an intro to stats that they took with a psychology prefix. So we can be a little bit more flexible with the statistics uh, requirement. So the general rule of thumb, I would say, with the curriculum is that the biochem is going to be a lot more sequential. It's lockstep. It's specific. And Brittany and I had talked about this before the presentation. So biological sciences is going to be more flexible. So you're going to have the opportunity to take additional bio class. We'll take bio classes that you choose without having to be so prescriptive. Um, so the biochemistry is pretty set in stone for the major requirements. There are some electives, um, but those are definitive. There aren't any choices. Um, and a lot of times when students transfer in credit, they're like, I took a biochem class. Why doesn't that count? Um, and you're like, it's not the same biochem class. Whereas if you took a bio somewhere else, most likely the biological sciences may degree, they're going to say, that's fine, that fits. <laughs> it's the bio, that's what we're looking for. Um, yep, as long as it's up for division. Something that we don't accept and you haven't seen here is anatomy and physiology. It's a lower division bio course and we don't accept it in the major. So not even as an elective. So if you're pre-med and you need anatomy and physiology, you're taking that in addition to all of our biological science classes. So that's a class that we won't accept as an elective. It's a lower division. The only lower division electives in the major are the bio one, the bio two, and then microbiology lecture and lab. Um, and then I do want to point out, we have the science and society requirements as well, just like biochem, um, but we do have quite a bit of bio classes that overlap in that section. So we can be a little bit strategic in those major requirements and take science and society courses that are also going to double dip in the major requirements. And so, um, we can look at the bio list and say, okay, well, it looks like bioethics is a science and society. We can also count it in the major. All right, all right, awesome. Um, the only other thing I saw there is that the calculus 251, 210 is offered online, but I think 265 would be their choice. So, um, let's talk a little bit more about the labs. Um, so for the labs for biochemistry, the general chemistry one and the general chemistry two are a lab kit. It's done through eScience. There is basically a kit that you purchase. It gets mailed to you. Um, all the chemicals that we're using in the kit are kind of like, you know, things you could buy at, in the grocery store. So there isn't anything too harmful. Um, the labs are an important part of the course, so the labs are part of the final grade with the lecture as well. Um, so if you miss too many labs, um, then you end up failing the course. Um, the lab kit that you purchase from eScience, um, I believe there's a discount if you purchase it with the experiments for Gentium 1 and Gentium 2, or you could purchase it at a cheaper cost for either just Gentium 1. Organic chemistry, the labs are in person. Um, so the reactions, the type of things you're working with that for this, we don't want you to do at home in your kitchen like Tim Kim. We'd like um, to have you to come here to Tempe. So we've um, given students that hands-on experience in this compressed format. So seven and a half weeks for the regular courses is compressed and the labs are even more compressed. They are seven consecutive days for organic chemistry one and organic chemistry two. It's basically three and a half days for organic one and then another three and a half days for organic two. Um, all the experiments are done between the hours of eight and five in the lab. There's an hour lunch in between. Sometimes for lunch, there's a guest speaker. Um, and sometimes students work on lab reports at two labs um, during lunch hour. Um, so there is a partnership with the residential colleges. So if you wanted to live on the dorm for that one, in the dorm for that one week, you could at Picker Hall. 
Um, there is one lab report for organic one and then one lab report for organic two. The biochemistry lab, as I mentioned before, it's like the capstone. So working with proteins, this is also in person. Um, we don't recommend students doing both of these in the same summer. It's always going to be offered in the summer. It's never going to be in a regular fall or spring semester. It's always in the summer. Um, sometimes the organic lab and the bio can lab overlap, but there should be sections where if you need to take both of them, they don't overlap. We don't recommend it because it's a lot of experiments to track of and a lot of lab reports to write. So we usually recommend doing the organic lab in one summer and then doing the bio can lab the following summer. I'll however the sequencing works out so that you need to pre -rack. You do have to have general chemistry or general biochemistry one and two done before doing the lab. So that is also eight to five. Um, the lab reports are a little more intense for the biochem lab. There are several lab reports versus just the one for the organic lab. Um, and they are due in the weeks when you return back home. So there's one due each week, I believe. Um, and I believe there are seven total labs for that class. Um, and then the physics and the biology classes are all simulations. So they're all videos. You watch a video. You can see a worksheet for the physics. Um, so you're doing more um, virtual type labs. Put on your PPE now. <laughs> this is what you have to do next versus um, like these in-person experiences or these kids. So for biological sciences, um, she mentioned that's what the bio, so bio one and two is a four credit class and they both have simulation experiences for the lab component. Uh, and then there's two required labs in the major that typically correspond with some of the lectures that you've chosen. So let's say you choose to take animal physiology. You could then take animal physiology lab. It's a separate two credit course to fulfill one of the two uh, major requirements or the lab requirements in the major. Um, vertebrate zoology is an example of a four credit lecture and lab class. So that one could count as one of your lab requirements. You just need two but most of them correspond with one of the lectures that you've taken. So you can take them concurrently or your most of the students or the way they're offered, take the lecture first and then they follow with the lab. So you need two labs for the major, then organic chemistry or general chemistry one and two, Renda chatted about that. Elementary organic chemistry lab will be in person next summer. So that might be half the time is what we're thinking for that uh, 235 lab. And then she mentioned 237 and 238 is that full week long. And then physics 101 or 113 is again a simulation, so that's online. So the organic chemistries are the only ones that are in person. Everything else is a simulation um, online. Yep, and I double checked 235 will be three and a half days, just like 237. Hey, awesome. awesome. Is that a new addition to the program? That was a part of the program for ground and it wasn't offered online last summer or the previous summer. So it's a new addition to the online in-person compressed format. Yeah. Very cool. We were previously um, shifting students that knew they wanted to come to take the lab into 233. And so then they could come and take the 237 lab last summer. So now students that know they're not pre-health, they just want one semester of elementary organic chemistry, which is like a broad overview of what's covered in the, the one and two sequence, can now just do come and take the lab over the summer for that lecture. Okay, so there's a few ways to get experiential learning in the major. Um, it does take a little bit of legwork on the students part. And so there's two ways to get the experiential learning. It's research or internship. Both of those will count as one of the labs for the major. And then students can take another internship or research to count as an elective in the major. So we can use six hours in the major. Research would be bio 495 is the prefix. You might've seen that when you're searching for bio classes. 
that would be through ASU. So students that are living locally in Phoenix can apply to work with a research faculty on campus at ASU working in their lab. There's two typically ways students do that. One is through Handshake, which I like to call it like ASU's version of LinkedIn. So you can upload your resume, your cover letter, people post jobs on there. Um, some of our faculty post their open lab positions. And then, or you can reach out by faculty. You could reach, up, reach out by saying, okay, I'm interested in climate change. You could see what faculty are studying climate change. And then I always say research the researcher. So before you even reach out, know what they've written in the last few years, you've looked at their CV, you're, you know about them. So you're reaching out with your resume and cover letter and saying, hi, I'm an online student, I live in the area, I'm interested in climate change, I see you have a lab associated in this field, do you have a time to meet, can we schedule one-on-one, -on -one? and then that would be a great time to ask if there's positions in their lab. They say yes, everything goes to plan, you would be working in their lab and we would give you 495 credit on your schedule. So instead of logging in, going into a class, you would just be going to that faculty's lab and you would be getting research credit for it. And it's anywhere from one to three credits. So depending on how many hours you do, that's if you're local. So 495 is just through ASU affiliated faculty. Um, more common are students do bio 484, which is an internship. So if you're working in a science related field where you would like to get a job or you're looking for internships, we can give you the 484 credit. The application process for that is a due a few months before. So like our spring schedule, our spring internship is due October 30th. So if you are working in a science related field or are thinking that you wanna do an internship for spring, you'll need to get that application in soon and I've listed our website to apply for the internship credit. So you can do one to three hours depending on how many hours a week you work. If you're currently working in the job, you do have to take on an extra task or an extra responsibility to use that as an internship. Um, and then weekly reflections are due, and then there's a final portfolio, which is where you're, where you're actually graded. So you're writing about your experience, and then you're putting together a final portfolio, and then we'll use that as research, internship, or lab credit, rather, or credit in your major. And then I had some just details on the side. So there are the hour breakdowns. So if you do 45 hours in the semester, which is like two to three hours a week, uh, you can get one credit and then it goes down that way and then six hours can be used in the major. So students have to go out and find either their own position or their own internship, reach out to companies, organizations that you want to work in. Um, and I did note that it has to be non-medical related. Um, paperwork's a little bit different for students working in like the medical field um, and our office doesn't have that capacity yet. And so non-medical related science field and that could be internship credit. Okay, so with biochemistry, it's a little bit similar. Um, we want students to get these experiences. So introducing in spring of 2020, we've created a uh, 394 course called Introduction to Computational Chemistry and Biochemistry. Um, basically, this is like a math methods course where students are going to be doing biochemical and chemical research, but the computational modeling of it. So they'll be going through awesome thing cover here. New participants maybe. Um, they'll be going through exercises where they're going to look at the various method, methods of modeling structures, um, reactivity of molecules, molecules as small as water, but then as large as protein or nucleic acid. Um, so they do a research project at the end of that course. So the goal of that course is to help students how learn how to do research without having to be in a lab. So you could do um, research with any professor or any facility, any lab um, at home because you'll be able to do computational methods um, and contribute to the lab and the project in that way. Um, we also have a PCH or CHM 392 research technique course. This is available for on ground students and we're going to make this available for online students. So coming up uh, likely soon in the fall of 2020 is what I'm expecting. Students will, be, will start being able to gain credit 
for doing research in a local lab. So I had a student call me this week, one of our students, and say, I got a position at one of the labs in my area, and I'm going to be looking at lead in the urine of monkeys. Can I get credit? <laughs> right now, it's not set up to get credit for that. But um, as long as the project is molecular in nature and um, it's a research site, um, we can work on helping students to earn credit. Um, a lot of what I heard when students were in the summer labs is how am I going to get experience? I'm an online student. How am I going to get research experience? And um, the 394 computational chemistry modeling class is kind of what we've done to help students to gain a skill so that they will be able to do research um, in different ways. Um, internships are more industry related. So this past semester, we had a student do an internship with Arizona Department of Health. And she worked on doing sample receipt and accepting those, collecting those, sample preparation, um, type of collaboration, looked at supplies, and inventory, paperwork, uh, Q&A, quality control, all these things. Um, and 12 hours a week, 135 hours, basically, in the whole semester will get you three credit hours. Um, it's about the same formula for research. If you're doing 12 hours a week in the lab, then that is three credit hours. You can also, um, just like in the school of life sciences, do one credit hour or two credit hours um, with less hours. So the internship is the same um, as the school of life sciences. If you find an internship in your local area, we want you to get credit for it. Um, just contact us and we will be in touch with the supervisor of that facility. It has to be unpaid if they're going to be earning credit. Um, and we can work out the legal aspect of having you do your internship with them. There, there is no assignment that you have to do for the internship with us. I think in the School of Life Sciences, you have like weekly reports and you have like um, a project that you have to do, but there isn't an assignment or anything extra you need to do for the internship with us. Um, for research credit, there is like a lab report that you do at the very end on your findings of what your project is. Um, we have a few questions. I don't know if you want to take questions at each point or wait till the end. Um, we just have one more slide. So let's okay. wait till the end and do the questions. That. So career outcomes. Let's talk about the differences between the two major careers. So biochemists, it's the study of chemistry um, behind biological systems. So it's like the chemical process of living things, analyzing the chemistry of molecules like DNA, enzymes, proteins, and the effects that they have on biological systems. So some areas that students can go into after completing a biochemistry degree, um, we often see healthcare and medicine, so develop sensors or early detection of diseases, um, analytics for disease diagnosis and disease treatment. People go into the ph pharmaceutical industry, so developing different medications or clinical trials. Um, some students go into environmental science, earth surface chemistry, biogeochemistry, pollution, uh, food science, so food preservation. Um, we recently did a podcast um, with the chemist at Starbucks, and we talked about how they were a flavoring chemist, so all the flavors of the Starbucks drink, that's the chemist kind of behind that. So cosmetic chemistry, we have a podcast on that as well, so developing makeup products or um, skin hair products. Brewing, we did a podcast on that as well, so um, some students go into brewing industry, wine industry. Um, one of my students just applied to a viticulture program. Um, forensic, forensic science, so crime scene investigation or toxicology, uh, DNA analysis, or disease control, like the CDC government agency. So a lot of students are interested in free health. Typically, med school, pharmacy school, dental school, PA school, PT school, occupational therapy, optometry, all of these different um, professional programs require usually two semesters of gen chem, two semesters of o -chem, two semesters of physics, uh, two semesters of bio, and then at least one semester of calculus. 
So you're hitting all of those requirements um, just by doing the major requirements. Um, you're getting a little bit extra because you're doing two semesters of calculus instead of having one or whatever the minimum is. Um, some programs require biochemistry, not all of them, but some do. Um, the VCA 361 is principles of biochemistry. Um, it's just the basics. That is sufficient for most um, graduate programs. Our major is 461 and 462. Most graduate programs take either 361 or 461 and 462. You can't have just 461 because it's only some of the topics of biochemistry. So most of the time, it's both of the 461 and 462. Um, some programs, some medical schools, you'll see recommended, you'll see the required classes and you'll see recommended. In the recommended list, you'll see genetics, cell bio, molecular bio, anatomy and physiology, microbio. Um, for pharmacy, it requires microbio, but only for some schools. So there's a lot of other requirements that are um, on a case-by-case -case basis based on what program you want to apply to. Um, but the core of most programs um, you're getting already in the degree plan. Um, I put a link to the pre-health advising website there. Um, they basically have every single professional program and you can go to the directory and in the directory it'll list the prereqs for that particular school and that particular program. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I would say the careers that we see in biological sciences is a little bit more flexible in nature. So since the major portion is, is hey, upper division bio, you can really tailor it to whichever way you want to go. So we have different concentrations on our ground campus, um, conservation and ecology, neurophysiology and behavior, genetic cell and development, neuroscience. We have a bunch of different concentrations and we've pulled courses from each concentration to offer online. So maybe years down the road, we'll start pulling more of those concentrations to the online format. We just don't have all of those courses available. So for example, the conservation ecology concentration that we have online or on ground, excuse me, you can take some of those courses online. So you can take ecology, you can take conservation, you can take the ecology lab. So you could focus your major more towards ecology if that's the field you're interested in going into. There is courses like philosophy of science, bioethics, if you're wanting to study more of a general biology and society and how we use it with people in our world today. Um, there's classes like dog behavior, animal behavior, animal physiology, which are courses that are required for some of our neurobiology concentrations. So neurophysiology and behavior is one of them. So you can use some of those classes and then there's some career outcomes there. Um, we have a lot of students that are interested in animals, so going into like a zoology or a veterinarian field or pre-vet, and so there are classes that have to do with that. Um, every semester we offer special topic classes, so they're under the Bio 394 or 494 prefix, and those are topics that faculty want to offer that semester. Um, and so that's also a really great way to tailor your major based on what you're interested in studying. So for the spring, there's a society and natural resource management class. So if you're interested in that, going into a field, um, maybe a wildlife ecologist, something along those lines with ecology, you could take that one. Or if you're more interested in health, the evolutionary medicine and global health class. So really wide range of topics. We get some students that want to teach. So you could definitely tailor your biology major to subject matter that you want to teach, depending on what grade you want to go into. Um, but I've listed here just really flexible, and you really component, and we're open. Um, we can help you guys with internships, or we're open for those internship options. I think a student this semester is working at a boxing gym, and at first we were like, well, that doesn't really have to do with, with bio, um, but she talked about doing rehabilitation uh, with people that have Parkinson's disease out of the bio gym, out of the boxing gym, and so we're really open to using your experience or your experiential learning to give you credit in the major. Just come and chat with us. Okay, so here's where we'll do the questions, Ellie. These are the ones that you guys listed before. You had some additional ones that you had right before the meeting started, and then 
um, you had some as we were going. So we'll try to get those answered. The first question, um, are there certain classes, electives, for example, that are not available every semester? When they are available, how important is it to jump on enrolling in that class? Is there any general rule or time frame when class needs to be available? Example, once per school year, once during fall, et cetera. So um, I'll answer my portion and I'll let Brittany answer hers. So, Yes, the electives in the major, there are three offerings currently, it's analytical chemistry, that's always going to be offered in a spring A. I hate to say the word always because it's so fine because faculty change things on me sometimes, but from what I've been told and from what I've seen in the past few years, analytical chemistry is always going to be offered in the spring and it's always going to be A. Um, medicinal chemistry is always going to be offered in fall and it's always gonna be a B. Medicinal chemistry requires biochem, so plan accordingly if you plan to do that as your elective. And then we recently launched inorganic chemistry online, and that's always gonna be in spring, session B. So we normally draft a grad plan for students, so students know how to read their degree audit and their major map, but then sometimes we draft this Excel spreadsheet, it's a template that outlines all the remaining classes that they need to take. Um, and if you see anywhere in that spreadsheet that you may have doesn't match up with your elective in the major, cross-check it with this, I would say this is a good handle on what's actually going to be offered in the coming years. So genetics, session A, spring and fall and summer, um, evolution, session B, fall, spring, summer, the rest of them are really up to the faculty when they're adding them. Um, we'll always have a lab option. Um, so if you're at least one, so I would say try not to leave all your labs for the last semester because we can't guarantee there'll be more than one. Um, but it honestly just depends on when the faculty are offering them. They may offer them and then not enough students sign up for the course and it gets canceled. Um, so other than the genetics and evolution, um, it's really kind of up in the air. I like to look at what was offered the previous year. So before the spring schedule came out, I could look at what was offered last spring and get a good feel for what was available that spring and it might look the same. Um, and we'll be flexible if you're getting ready to graduate and you've taken all of the classes or something happens, uh, definitely just reach out. Uh, the next question, is it possible to double major um, with an on-campus program? It's not. Um, you can absolutely double major, but the, the major has to be online. Um, it just comes from like two different campuses or two different pots of money, two different enrollment so you can double major it just has to be with another major online and we can start that process or that form process for you um, and then same thing with minors so the minor also has to be listed as an online minor and that leads into the next question um, the paperwork the back end part of the the minor for biological sciences just hasn't been done yet. It's it's going through the works. Um, so hopefully fall, but I'm probably looking at next spring for the bio minor. Um, same for the biochemistry minor. Um, so all the classes that are required in the minor are currently available online, but it has to be approved through ASU online and we're both working through the steps to get them approved. Um, the other question there are any expansions. Um, talk to Dr. Gould and Dr. Austin, and they are cooking up things. I don't know what they are as of right now. Um, students have asked about at getting the medicinal concentration online. I know they're looking at that. They're looking at different things, um, but I don't have anything definitive right now for a new program. But I would say definitely if you're interested in one of the minors just to take the classes. And that's something you can absolutely put on your resume, talk about in an interview. Those skills are, are great. Um, it's just not gonna be maybe formally on your degree if you're graduating in the next few semesters. Okay, what other questions did you guys have? 
Thank you so much for one. That was tremendous and a lot of information. And it's really, really cool to see the two programs laid out side by side. Don't think that's really a perspective that we've gotten in quite this way before. So thank you both for that. That was wonderful. Oh, I was also going to ask, um, would it be possible for us to get a copy of the slides that go along with this? Yeah. We'll post it with the recording. Excellent. I'll send Arenda some edits that I saw and then we'll send it over. Perfect. So the first question that came up was when we were looking at the research slash internships section. And the question was asked, are internships and or research credits required? And I'm not entirely sure, Lucy, what in particular, if you were asking about a specific course or opportunity, or if that was kind of a general question. So maybe you could elaborate a little bit. Yeah, it was yeah. more of just a general question. Um, I don't even know if I'm going to be doing an internship or anything like that, but just in general, do you have to do one to graduate or is it just kind of if you want to? <laughs> yep, you don't have to. Yeah, uh, for our labs, you don't have to. You could definitely take ecology and animal physiology, then take the two labs and that would get your lab components out of the way. Um, but definitely with an online degree, I always encourage the experiential learning portion, just a way to get involved, to make contacts with people in the industry, figure out if you even want to go into that industry, maybe the internship shows you that, oh, I actually don't know if I want to be in this industry. Maybe I could go over here. Um, letters of recommendation, right? Typically students reach out to their supervisors when they're ready to get those letter of recommendations. Um, so great way to get experiential learning, but definitely not required for bio. Same, not required. David Reed asked, in the DARS, um, MIC, which I believe is micro, 220, is listed as the biochem upper bio elective, but only bio 205 is available online. Is this one of those instances where the DARS hasn't caught up to what's going on to count towards graduation? Okay. Yeah. 205 and 206, they have to work together. So you have to have a lecture in lab, but 205 and 206 will fulfill your additional major requirement, or we can use it as a lab, but they have, they are just a pair, they go together. SARS hasn't caught up yet. Michelle's okay. asking, go ahead, go ahead, David. Okay, what I was, I'm, I'm in biochem and- I yeah, I have to take two upper division biological end. sciences. Yeah. And whenever I look at my doors, there is six options available. And one of the and the option is Mike 220. Right. So I've never seen it offered online. Yeah. And I see yeah. 205 offered. And I just didn't know. Because that's something I would be interested in if I could take it. But if I can't, then I'm going to have to make other choices. Good question. So I thought you were in the question and had biochem and chem, in, in, but then you said it was counting in the major. So um, the advanced biology electives, um, you can use microbiology. Um, originally, the DARS is program to look for MIC 220, which is only offered on ground, but there is coding in the back end in DARS that recognizes 205. Um, 205 does count. You don't have to have 206, so it only requires two classes. Um, if you wanted to do microbio, MIC 205, and genetics, that would be your two classes. Um, if you want to do the lab with it, you can. Um, it's not required. If DARS is not showing it populating after you register for it, reach out to us and we can make sure that it does. But that is an acceptable advanced file elective, MIC 205. Awesome. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. I saw on the biological sciences pathway, because I'm biochem as well, so I'm more familiar with that one, that the calculus course required is Calc for Life Sciences. The biochemistry students have to take calculus for engineers. Why? <laughs> I guess, are you asking why, why the biochem students have to take more math or why biological sciences have to take less? <laughs> no, not the, not, sorry, I don't mean more math, but why the engineering emphasis instead of life sciences emphasis? Since once we get to like yeah. PCHEM, we're working with calculus derivations, but in biological systems, not engineering structures. 
Yeah, so good question. Um, technically, the biochemistry is a natural science. It's one of the physical sciences, not a life science. So the faculty of being, say, for instance, for this computational chemistry and modeling that seems to be that that level of calculus is not high enough. Um, and there is no calculus to the back calculus either. So for the okay. online, um, for the ground students, they're doing calc with analytic geometry, but that is an offered online. So calc for engineers would be the next closest thing um, that is going to prepare you for to be a biochemist or as well as to be successful in the upper division class. Well, and on that same note, what about like a calculus-based physics instead of what it is now? Is that, will that be an option later? I don't be too late. Calculus-based calculus physics is an option right now and students can take it if they prefer to take that instead of the algebra-based physics and we would count it in the major, the higher level physics. Okay. The only problem with that is that the physics two requires calc three and calc three isn't required for our major. So you'd be having to take another calculus class in order to do that calc based physics. Okay. Mm -hmm. Michelle is asking, what professions will the biomedical sciences major cover? And I'm 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 reading that as what does that prepare you for industry wise? Yeah, it's going to be definitely more geared toward pre-med, pre-health. Um, developmental bio is a course that's typically recommended for pre-med, pre-health, and that's one of the core requirements. So it looks similar to the biological sciences, but instead of having a open section to say, hey, here's, you take nine classes, it says, no, you have to take cell bio, you have to take developmental bio, you have to take animal physiology. So it's more specific. So instead of tailoring it to maybe like a conservation biology, um, biomed will be more so covering specifically those pre-med, pre-health. So your biological science major could actually look very similar to the biomed major um, if you were strategic and kind of placed your classes the same as biomed. We also had another question posted on the Facebook group. You're welcome. I am having some trouble finding it. If Sam or Nikki, if any of you guys can put your hands on it. Um, it was a question about the electives for the biological sciences major, um, particularly the fact that they seem to be limited in the frequency that they're offered. And there are students that have talked about struggling with, to plan out their grad plan the way they want to because they can't take the emphasis. They can't put the emphasis in the classes they're looking to based on availability. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's up to the faculty. So I, it's when the faculty can teach the class, it's when they're available, it's when they're here. Um, we know we'll have a specific number of classes offered every semester, but it's honestly up to when, when they can. We're creating a list right now, like so we have a carousel of, of every term and what we've offered every term to get a better idea. Um, they know that you guys need classes and we're definitely advocates for that as well. Um, but when the schedule comes out, it's kind of up to them to say, okay, well, we're offering ecology this semester or we don't have a faculty member to teach ecology, so we can't teach it this semester. Do you see general trends with the biological sciences or electives, my apologies, it's similar to the way that like medicinal chem and analytical chem, you know that they're gonna be offered spring A or fall B or whatnot? Um, I typically look at what was offered last year, last spring. So for this coming spring before the schedule came out, I looked at what was offered last spring to get an idea-ish of what was offered. Um, as far as A and B go, no, not necessarily trends. Um, typically, if the lab is going to be offered, it'll be offered in session B so that students can take the lecture in session A. Um, so just kind of being strategic when planning that way. If you know you want to take the lab, make sure you have space to take the lecture in session A. There are people asking in the chat, will developmental biology come back? I wanted to take this course, but haven't seen it offered in quite some time. It's not created yet, and that's why the biomed hasn't been put online yet. That's really what we're waiting for. Um, so fall 2020, it should be available online for any of our biochem or bio students to take. The Chem 394 course, I, that's new, correct? That's not something that's existed before spring? Correct. 
it's in the spring schedule. I, I looked it up while you were talking because okay. it's really, really cool. Mm -hmm. There, there are general class requirements for organic chemistry and calculus. But I don't see anything about experience. Is it there's 25 seats? Do you have to apply to the? Is it like a research position, or is it meant more as a course to prepare you for research? It's meant more of a course to prepare you to be able to do that type a component in a research group. Um, it is a 494, it's a 394, so basically it's a 94 here at ASU, we call those omnibus courses. They're basically what Brittany was describing earlier, any course that doesn't have a definitive title that faculty want to teach that semester. So they, they vary from semester to semester. We don't have a lot of those in the online, we don't have any actually in the online degrees, only in the on-ground degrees, so you guys have probably never seen it before. But since this is like um, a new course, it, it's this 9-4 attachment. These courses, um, you can't list a prereq, a prerequisite to them, so we put something called department consent on the course, which means you have to email us to get the permission, like the override to be able to take the class, so in the notes section of the course, you'll see a brief summary of uh, what the course is about, just like a course description in any other class. And then you'll see um, what prerequisites that we're requesting. I will say that students who have had no programming experience struggle a little bit more in that class when they're trying to like um, start with step one like you have to have each period and each semicolon when you're doing programming and coding so um right now it just requires gen chem 2 and count two. so when it says departmental consent required that's for the enrollment requirement does it require you to contact the professor ahead of time and ask for a spot in the class do you go through your academic advisor how would a student interested start that process um, I'm not sure. It should say in the notes to contact SMS Advising, so or SMS Online. Does it say online? It says please contact SMS Advising at ASU.edu yeah. to request department consent. Yep, that one or the SMS Online that you guys normally use. Um, just send the request there. First come, first serve. So whoever meets the prereq, we keep basically a spreadsheet of all the requests. Um, Mary Ann, you guys may have met her before, talk with her through um, email, she manages it. And as long as you meet the prerequisite, we give you the override to take the class, and then it fills up just come through. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Are there any more questions for the chat box? Or if you guys want to unmute, that's fine too. Oh, there was a question about developmental bio. I believe we asked that, and it's a clean, oh. yeah. Well, I think that's it for our questions then. I think so, yeah. Thank you both so much. Hey, yeah, no problem. Anytime, yeah, email us, on. email if you have any additional questions. We'll work on um, the couple typos that are in the presentation, and we'll send, I'll reply to you, Ellie, to your Zoom link email and we'll Perfect. do it there. Oh, Megan has a question. She wants to unmute and be typing. You can go ahead and just um, talk out loud if you'd like. Oh, okay, no worries. Your question's about the class, science, and society courses? While she's typing, uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure if this is entirely applicable or not, um, and it's kind of isolated to just me, so sorry for stealing thunder. But uh, I have been told that I have a lower division computer sciences requirement by one person and then an upper division computer sciences requirement by a different advisor. I have an appointment to speak to Noel on the 30th, but um, 
would it really, I mean, how much does it, it's computer sciences, how much does that matter exactly? Yeah. I'm a biochemistry major, sorry. Yes, I figured when you said you had a point with Noel. So um, ASU has general studies requirements and the general studies requirement for ASU just says that your computer science um, has to be there. It could be lower division or upper division. Sometimes we plan it to be upper division because you're doing something else lower division somewhere else. For instance, anatomy and physiology, if you were going to do that, then we want you to make up the additional upper division hours somewhere else to get to the 45 upper division hours. That are required. So that's why you might have seen it um, planned differently um, by different advisors. Um, and that's the thing about advising. We just give the advice and then you guys decide. So you'll notice sometimes, you know, the advice from the advisor varies. Um, we approach things differently. Um, so I usually recommend taking all the tools, degree audit, major map, what the advisors have discussed with you and then kind of like developing your own plan, making your own decision. But confirm with her during your appointment that if you do it as lower division, do you need to make up those upper division hours? Thank you. Mm -hmm. So the question so for Megan. Oh, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I'll take that one. So yeah. we actually changed this fall 2019 um, catalog so that science and societies will share with humanities and will share with all of the major requirements and both of them will. So in the past, they have been shared with humanities or social behavior and we were only allowed to use one in the major. Now we can use both in the major. So for bio, both can fit in the major and then they can go into literacy. So some of them are triple dippers. Some will go into literacy, science and society and in your major. Um, so if you have an older catalog or you we're not just admitted, uh, you can reach out to us and we can change your catalog year so it'll automatically reflect like bioethics as a humanity, so it should go into humanities and science and society and in the bio major. So there are quite a few classes, uh, so just be on the lookout for that and reach out to us if uh, you need anything, but it was just changed um, this semester. Yes, Physics 101 is totally fine for the bio major. Physics 101, Intro to Physics, and then Elementary Organic Chemistry as well for bio major. Um, Does that change apply to the biochemistry major as well for the science, science and society? Um, yes, so that is a new um, decision from the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. So this double dipping between the literacy and the humanities, that is across all of the majors in the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. We don't have any science and society classes that count in the major though, because as we talked about, the major is pretty prescriptive. It's like you need these exact courses and then there's the one elective and the elective is these are like natural sciences, physical sciences, they don't have anything to do with like society or anything like that. So um, there isn't anything that double dips in the major for the science and society. Um, just the literacy and the humanities and internal studies. And the biochemistry lab, the 463 is an upper division literacy as well, right? So we kind of have that covered just by the major requirement. Yes, 467. 467. The biochem lab, yep, it's yes. a literacy, yep. I was wondering, but when will the new major map plan be available? I'm trying to understand that question. Is that like the new catalog year that Brittany was talking about? Or? Is that what you're asking about, Michelle? Yeah, I just had a quick question. Two questions. One, can we, I'm thinking about changing the biomedical sciences. And then two is, when will that be available? And also, when will the major map be available? It's not going to come out until fall 2020. So maybe by summer before that, the major map might be available. I know they're working on it right now. It hasn't been approved yet, but fall 2020 is when uh, the major should come out for it to be available. I'm, I'm very new to this major. I'm biological sciences. So should I just say biological sciences and then transfer over and just 
work on the major map from there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you both very much. You're welcome. I think uh, one of my last questions, because <laughs> I can't ever call them my last question, because then I think of two more. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, would be since online students can't double major or concurrent major with an on-campus program given the different schools and funding like you're talking about how easy is it or is it easy at all for an online student to transfer on campus do you have to apply to the on-campus schools is it considered still like an in-school switch it's easy um, funding is different so the tuition is the tuition is totally different we're in state or out of state um, tuition changes, there's different fees associated with on-campus versus online, um, but just let us know. If you change to on-campus, let's say you were taking online, you changed to on-campus, you have to stay in that campus for a year. Because funding is different, they don't want students switching back and forth, back and forth. So if you do decide on campus, you do have to stay for a year, and then you can transfer back to online if you wanted to. What if you have less than a year left in your degree program? I, I hadn't heard that um, you have to stay for a year for the online to on campus, but I have heard the other way around. If you were on campus switching to online, that you have to stay a year. So we can double check for you, but mm -hmm. obviously if you have less than a year, you would just switch and then complete like that one last semester on campus. Um, Megan had a question about 235. Will the department reach out? To schedule the labs. I, I think like are you speaking like how soon do you get that information given that you're in Japan? Yeah, good question. Um, we did mention it early, but earlier, but just briefly, that normally the actual dates for the biochem labs are released once the schedule comes out, which is usually in February. We usually have a good handle on the dates in January though. Um, Dr. Austin would be a good one to reach out to if you're you know, want to plan ahead, we can probably give you a good idea of what weeks, what possible weeks they would be if you want to plan earlier than when the schedule comes out. But typically February or January. I also want to mention that you guys can take them locally as well and then just transfer the course in. So you don't have to come to ASU, you don't have to come to Arizona. Um, we have what we call the transfer credit guide. So you could just Google transfer credit guide at ASU. You could look up the school that's nearby you, community college, the lower division course, um, or university nearby you. And as long as it's equivalent, so it says, yes, it comes back as Chem 235, 237, 238. So you could take the lectures online and then take the labs locally and then transfer those in. So that's an option for students as well. But who wouldn't want to come to Arizona in the middle of summer? <laughs> it was a cool experience, especially the net. Campus yeah. <laughs> it's cool. The students could definitely connect, I think, to, over those labs. But right. family reasons, something happens, you can't come out. Um, if there is a school nearby, you can take it locally. Brittany, Arenda, thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. Thanks this for having wonderful. us. Let us know if you have any other questions. Yes, I will send them along. You guys, I mean, obviously, you your emails are available that any student can email you directly. If anything comes up, you guys can also post to the Facebook group, and I will pass them along. Uh, I don't know if I'm in the ideas Facebook group. I'm in like I don't think I am either. One. Yeah, you guys so. are more than welcome to join. You joined SDS through Sun Devils Connect. Okay. Yeah, All right. um, we operate mostly out of the Facebook group as far as for just, it's a little more user friendly for yeah. everything. Got it. Okay. All right. Thanks. All right. Hey, thank thank you, everybody. you. Have a good night. Bye. Bye. You too.